All right. Recording and Friday progress. Fill up. Yep. Alec is personally recording right to his his brain. <laughs> yes. Oh, <man. laughs> so uh, this is uh, session three of the Friday uh, of Kingdom Coordination. We're, we've been doing a series, and uh, we started with the idea of the body of Christ. Do we have uh, a big head and a little body, right? That can't actually support the head, kind of like how babies uh, they lack coordination because of this giant dome that they have, right? They're trying to <laughs> navigate through. Uh, and I feel like sometimes the body of Christ feels like that. Uh, last week, session two, uh, we talked about the symphony of faith and uh, kingdom coordination very much being like an orchestra. And the difference between an orchestra and a symphony is a symphony is the movement of music that they play and an orchestra is the band, right? But everyone must be in sync with one another. So, uh, which leads us to session three today. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, today is called the divine dance, the divine dance. Um, hold on one second. I'm gonna share. All right. The divine dance. Um, I think this series is kind of increasing as we go along um, with just the idea of different aspects of life that require coordination, intentionality, um, humility, thinking of others as more valuable than ourselves, and really making room for one another. So I want you to start off uh, this session with just imagine a business or an organization led by three people who are all equal in position. They're all equal in position and authority, okay? What challenges do you see in this business or organization and what strengths do you see? So I wanna open it up, there's our warm up. What challenges do you see in this business and what strengths do you see? Okay, so anybody feel free to jump out. I feel like the strengths would be having three minds instead of one mind to make decisions um, and to help each other out mm -hmm. uh, with making certain decisions. And then a weakness can also be <laughs> um, flip side of that would be not being able to make a decision, having to make sure everyone lines up and agrees can be challenging. Yeah. Agreement. That's the key word there. Yeah, really good. Thanks, Alec. Um, anybody else? I would see it as like somebody who has the idea, somebody who is able to articulate that idea, and somebody who's able to carry out the idea and they work in unison together, collaborating. Mm. Amen. Collaborating, be able to work it out. Right. It's one thing if, if somebody comes up with the idea, but then someone else is supposed to actually implement it. Right. Is there is there coordination between thoughts and action? Really good. Um, Monique or Baruki, what do you think? A business led by three people equal in position. You gotta unmute if you're available. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I guess as far as um, what challenge do I see is just sometimes um, the vision can be be different. Um, uh, the the mission can be the same, but they can have a different vision on, on how to uh, complete that that mission, I suppose. Um, and I guess the strength I see is like there's no there's no one above no one else. So, um, 
it should cause them to work work together. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it it forces every person in the circle to focus on each other. Um, really good. So I, I think you guys are, are mature enough to understand we're talking about the Trinity here. And you think about God's business, God's family, God's mission, his kingdom, right? That it's actually a kingdom of three leaders. And all three leaders are perfectly in sync with one another. Um, Matthew 28, verse 19 says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I would like to suggest to you that they all have the same name. They are all of the same family, same name, right? But they also have equal position and authority yet they have different purposes, different implementations, and, and not that they have different ideas, but that they um, all present a unique expression of the Godhead, right, of the Trinity. So three leaders, all of them are distinct from one another, yet united perfectly. They honor one another, submit to one another, they are obedient to one another, they each understand the purpose and value that each brings to the family now get hold on to that right now purpose and value of each member purpose and value okay they're not offended when one stands up to make a decision they are not jealous when one is exalted in fact they rejoice when one member of the team is lifted high because it means that they are all exalted when one is okay this is the divine dance of the three in one. This is the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Spirit in perfect unity. Notice this, free from competition. Come on, free from competition and self-obsession. If you guys remember from ARC 102, we talked about the definition of sin being self-obsession. It is a disease of self-obsession and in God, there is no sin. Therefore, there is no self-obsession right? Everyone is focused on one another. Now, I'm really going to pull on Philippians 2 here. I feel like this says it uh, better than we ever could. And this is what we should um, really contend for. We should contend for this reality in our lives. And Jesus is the perfect example of this. So Philippians 2, starting in verse 3, says, do nothing from selfish or empty conceit. But with humility, consider one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, right? He's the best example of this, who, as he already existed in the form of God, right? He was, he is God. He always was God. He will always be God, but he didn't consider it equality with God as something to be grasped, right? The Bible says that he emptied himself. That word in Greek is kenosis. He literally emptied himself by taking the form of a bondservant and being born in the likeness of men. And being found in the appearance of as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Man, that's, that's a, an extreme um, example of obedience. Death on a cross. For this reason, also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now notice, when Jesus is exalted, the Father receives glory. Think about that. Right. That when G when every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord, the the glory of God to the father. Right. Is also exalted. He receives glory, even though Jesus and the father are equal. Jesus was willing to go to the lowest place as a suffering servant so that the father's plan could be carried out. Humility is the key. It wasn't that Jesus thought less of himself. Come on. He didn't think less of his value 
within the, the, the family business or within the Trinity. Um, it was the fact that they thought so highly of our value. Look, look, look at this. The Trinity put intrinsic value in humanity and thought so highly of humanity that they were willing to sacrifice and condemn sin in the flesh, in the body of Jesus, right? It says that even while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And what is the result? Christ is exalted above every name, and then we get invited to sit with him as his body, right? And this is all glory to him. It's all glory to the Father. John 16, uh, verses 13 through 15, this is where Jesus is teaching his disciples about the Holy Spirit and about the unity that the Father, Son, and Spirit have. When, when he, but when he, the Spirit of truth, right, Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take from mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. This is why I said that he takes from mine and will disclose it to you, right? He's painting this picture of equality between the Father, Son, and the Spirit, that they share in all things. That when, when the Spirit of Christ, which has been poured out to us, brings us revelation, it is li literally revelation from the Son and the Father. And they exalt one another. It's this beautiful divine dance of the three in one that is revealed to us um, by being his temples, right? So Jesus is the perfect example of submission. And he's, um, I want you to realize submission, if you break down the word, it means under mission. Sub means under mission, right? That he's under the father's mission, but so is the spirit. Whatever the spirit hears, he reveals to you. They share all things. There is no stinginess, no selfish thinking. There's no fear of losing out. Jesus is God, which means he knows all things. Yet in his humanity, there are certain pieces of information the father had not revealed to him. And I think we are, when we say like in this next passage here, Matthew 24, a lot of people think like, oh, Jesus doesn't know the time when he's coming back. And I agree that at the time when he said this, he was in his flesh. And only things that he, he said were things that the father had revealed to him, right? He says, but about the day and the hour, no one knows, not even angels of heaven, nor the son, but the father alone, right? The father alone knows these things. Jesus in the flesh had limited information. How many of you guys realize that Jesus laid down the power of God, and it wasn't until he was baptized in the spirit that he was actually able to perform miracles, that he was able to uh, have inside information and perceive things in the spirit as was revealed to him. And at this time when he's saying this to his disciples in Matthew 24, right, he was still a man under the power of the Holy Spirit. And only certain things were revealed to him. Does that mean that in the grand scheme of eternity, that the father is withholding information from Jesus? I don't believe that. I believe that they are one in unity, right? All the time for all of eternity. But Jesus laid down his deity in order that um, he could experience what we experience. So, um. Here's the questions I want this to lead you to, and you guys have the rest of the time. Let's discuss. Feel free to jump out. The more you guys share, the better it will be. So how can you better honor those around you? Think about those that you're in coordination with. You're, you're doing life together. You're in kingdom coordination. How can you better honor those around you? Who is Holy Spirit calling you to? How can you support their mission above your own? right? How, how can we put other people's missions and callings above our own? How are you to coordinate with this person or group of people? How can you communicate your expectations with clarity to avoid discord, right? Think about that. Remember that, that, that divine dance of three leaders, all with equal position and authority. How can you communicate well to avoid discord? So you don't have to answer all of them, 
but maybe pick one question, whatever God is highlighting to you right now, jump out and um, let's discuss. Come on, guys. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, for me, I feel like one way I could honor being more court like coordination with certain people is I felt like I need to listen more to them, just like be there to listen to them. Mm. Asking questions. Yeah. Um, and just listen to them. I find myself talking a lot of times. <laughs> Amen. No, I think it's it's great. I think uh, the act of listening um, and intently listening at what people are saying um, is amazing. And I think also listening, not just with your physical ears, but listening to to someone in the spirit. What is, what is their spirit saying? You know? Really good. Let's keep it going. I think um, I can better honor those around me by holding them in intercession, like praying for them and asking the Lord to speak into their lives through me. You know, like maybe ask for words of knowledge or a prophetic word to confirm where they are in their life and, you know, um, support them by standing in yes. the wall for them. Amen. I, I think that's a, a really special way to show people that you care about them and that you support them is that, hey, I'm listening in the spirit specifically for you. I mean, shoot, if someone calls me, and says, I've been was praying for you and the Lord gave me a word. I'm like, yes, thank you. <laughs> like, like, amen. Like, I need that, you know? Um, so I think that's an amazing way to honor people around you. Let's keep it going. Come on, we got 10 more minutes. We need some discussion. Yeah, sorry guys. I've been so focused helping my guys with windows. I don't, I kind of lost track of what the purpose of this or the, um, what you were talking about. Who to honor, how to honor, and ways you can honor them. Who to honor, how to honor, and ways to honor them. They'll give yes. example of what we're talking about. Yeah, like um, how the Trinity um, is always calling each other higher and always supporting no, one another. I, I think for me and what I like and what I'm learning more of is how to serve just the regular Christian, like the one that's not in leadership in a church or an orga organization, but just being able to serve them in a way to where they understand what serving is. That's, that's what I like. That's good. And, yeah. And then also, because I'm a business owner and I like to one of my callings is speaking to, you know, other leaders and stuff like that, that I like to come in as just, yeah, that normal Christian. Like, hey, I'm not trying to take your role. I don't want to be your role. I'm just here because God put me in this position. Let me know how I can be of service. Let me know how it can be used, whether it's going to be. Um, the question, uh, how do you honor others? Um, that one 
I, for me, I'd say is a little difficult. Like it stood out to me, but it's a little difficult to, to answer in the sense of, um, I was just kind of thinking about that yesterday. Um, my brother-in-law passed away on Tuesday and, and it was interesting on, on how we honor people and we wait to do it when they pass. Um, whether that's putting them on a t-shirt or whatever else. Um, and so that one was hard because I think I was trying to figure out how have I honored him when, when he was around. And if I didn't, am I honoring too, too late? And so I don't know, but that's just one that stuck out to me. It's just something I've been going back and forth with anyways um, the last couple of days. Mm. Wow. Okay. So you like honoring people while we still have the opportunity to and um I mean we can still honor them or do things in remembrance and honoring people even when they've they've passed. But uh I I, I under I, I see what you're saying. I think we all have to be real with ourselves and you know, are there people we have opportunity to You cut out of that last sentence, Trav. What was that? I can't hear you. I don't know if everybody else can. The matrix is trying to hack the system right now. I can't hear anything. No, nope. negative. I just hear buzzing. Sounds like a bunch of mosquitoes. <laughs> How about that? Yes. Okay. Um, you were saying something so, about opportunities. Yeah, I, I was just kind of highlighting what Monique was sharing. Um, but one of the other questions is, who is Holy Spirit calling you to coordinate with, right? Um, and how can you support their mission over your own? And, you know, it's, it's kind of like some people feel called to certain things. And do we, do we get so self-consumed with what we feel God is calling us to? to? Uh, it's kind of like the idea of like, Everybody wants to know, what's my calling? I want to know, Lord, what's my calling, right? And what if, what if our calling is to be interested in other people's calling? And to live from that place of always being interested in what God wants other people to do and how can you support them, you know? Um, so who is the Holy Spirit calling you to and how can you support their mission? I hope you guys can still hear me. <laughs> yeah, we totally can. <laughs> I can hear you. Can you hear me, it's Luis? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, um, I'm just thinking as I'm listening to the questions and everybody's responses, how valid everyone everyone's response has been, and how diverse everybody you know is kind of giving a different perspective from the same thing. And and uh, I was thinking that sometimes. We're so self-absorbed in ourselves, or like you were saying, in whether our ministry or what we feel we're going to do, that we forget um, to look around us and see like we've learned the golden people and to honor that in them uh, instead of always saying, well, this is what we're called to be in because they're not doing it. Um, they're missing or they're less than. Uh, I know, take for example, Tisha's really great with me. Every so often she'll send me a text or or a song or something, and it just it just edifies me because I'm not alone. Somebody was thinking about me. Somebody remembered mm -hmm. me, you know, 
and in a way that's giving honor to you, that's giving value to you. And so I just want to thank her for that. And I think how many times does a thought come to me and I don't do it maybe, or uh, lately I've noticed when I'm in church and um, I'll see somebody walk in and say a new person and they go in and sit by themselves and no one talks to them, no one acknowledges them. Mm. And, I find, and I find myself, I'll go and sit next to them. I'll make sure I, I introduce my go and sit next to them. And it's kind of like, uh, I'm kind of quiet and stuff. So it's not something I would normally do, but I feel myself being led to that. Or sometimes I heard somebody be kind of unkind to somebody in church. And when that person got up to go outside, I asked him, I said, uh, could I pray for you? I would take him out and I'd say, can I pray for you? And they'd say, yeah. And so it's just kind of being aware of what's going on around us and being obedient to that. And it's something that it's kind of hard because I think I have a tendency to be so inward and so focused on myself to forget about other people. And I feel like that's something God's working in me to just say, honor the honor people around you. Don't worry about being honored. Honor the people around you. Look at them. And if, if you're judging or whatever and thinking, I don't see anything, ask the Lord, what do you see in them? What do you mm. see? Them? What do you want me to say to them? Because like you said, some, sometimes when someone comes up to me and speaks something, I call it life words, speak life into me. It's so edifying and encouraging. And I, I think as I'm listening to everybody, I'm just getting convicted. I'm saying, okay, Lord, um, this is what I want to do. I want to have that relationship with you and the Trinity and have the same that you have with the people around you. I don't know. I think I'm, I'm rambling on right now, but um, that was really good. So I lo we love it. Yeah. So it just kind of, um, because sometimes I know I get so into myself and it, it, the world revolves around me and it's so good to step out of that place. It mm. is so freeing to step out of that place and look around and say, Oh God, what do you want? What do you want me to do? And when you take your focus off yourself and onto him, um, it's just, it's just so good. It's so amazing. Yeah. And that's what I'm praying. You know, I've ever asked prayer for anything. I, that what I would like that I would just stop being so self-absorbed and just look and say, God, what do you want me to do? And where do you want me to do it? He brings people to mind. I met a Jewish lady the other day at a, a little speaker, Holocaust speaker thing I went to. And she's been on my mind. She gave me her card and everything. And I said, I should call her. And I just haven't done it. And I said, Lord, uh, to start being obedient to the things that God shows us. He has a reason that lady's been on my mind. He has something he wants to share with her, maybe just the fellowship. And I'm I'm holding that back. I'm holding that back. It, it's kind of a thing we sometimes, because we do it, we blame Jesus for doing that. Well, Jesus is holding back things from me, but he's not. He's not. We're just not turning around to him and opening ourselves to him saying, okay, <laughs> what are you wanting to do? Um, and, and to be obedient to do it. Yeah. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.